Mr. President. The Senator from North Carolina. Mr. President, uh, we're here today to engage in an honest and open debate about the nuclear agreement the administration's brokered with Iran. And let me at this point commend Chairman Corker for the way he and his committee has handled a very difficult process that has not been coordinated with the administration, uh, where their consideration was for Congress to be cut out. And I think Chairman Corker has done a wonderful job of inserting the Senate of the United States where it should be, part of this agreement. I'm here to tell you that this deal is based not on absolute value, absolute knowledge of Iran's activities or its intentions, including its nuclear ambitions, but is naively and dangerously based on faith and hope. Our national security should not be based on faith and hope. Our nation's security is too precious to be based on faith and hope alone. Faith that we will detect any Iranian efforts to cheat and hope that the Iranians will not cheat. Secretary of State John Kerry told the American people in June, and I quote, that we know what they did, we have no doubts, and that we have an absolute knowledge of the possible military dimensions of Iran's nuclear program. Let me say that again. We have an absolute knowledge of the possible military dimensions of Iran's nuclear program. As chairman of the Intelligence Committee, I can tell you, we don't have absolute knowledge of anything. Our intelligence is good, but it's not perfect, and it's disingenuous for Secretary Kerry to suggest otherwise. We must accept the self-evident fact that Iran has a horrific record of complying with non-proliferation commitments, and when our best tools are faith and hope, we're putting our own national security as well as our allies at risk. I respectfully ask my colleagues, as you consider your vote on this ag uh, agreement, to think about the following questions. Do you know where every potential nuclear facility is located? Do you know the location or activity of every nuclear-related laboratory, whether it's in a military facility or a university campus? Do we know whether Iran intends to purchase sensitive nuclear materials from a rogue nation, or whether we will detect the sale or the transfer of that nuclear material? Do we know the intentions of the supreme leader, or what he and his, or his successor may be thinking in 10 years? Do we know everything about Iran's past culpabilities, its future intent, or ability to conceal illicit nuclear activities? Have we assumed too much about Iran's willingness to abide by the agreement? Unlike Secretary Clary, uh, Kerry, I do not believe that we know everything about Iran's past nuclear efforts. I do not have faith that we know with any degree of certainty this regi regime's intentions, as he suggests. Our intelligence community does amazing things, and I'm continually impressed with the dedication, drive, and the capability of its people. Our intelligence community regularly provides our civilian and military leadership insights and assessments on the toughest national security problems. But they never, they never claim, and I wouldn't believe them if they did, to have absolute knowledge of any issue. Again. Intelligence is imperfect. Secretary Kerry told the American people and the members of this body, and I quote, no part of this agreement relies on trust. It will all be based on a thorough and extensive transparency and verification measures. With all due respect, the Secretary is oversimplifying the complex and difficult world of treaty compliance and verification. The Secretary should come clean and truthfully state that this agreement does not rely on trust. It relies on hope and faith. Faith that we will detect any Iranian efforts to cheat and hope that Iran will not cheat. My colleagues should be mindful before casting their votes 
Your eyes should be wide open to the uncertainty we as a nation are accepting with this agreement. If the IAEA and our intelligence community are not 100% certain and our collective assumptions are wrong and we get caught unaware or we're surprised, the consequences will be significant. They could be disastrous and we will without a doubt regret entering into this agreement. The agreement the administration has negotiated with Iran is based on faith that we know everything about the nuclear program today and hope that the Iranian regime will abide by the terms of this agreement. The administration is displaying misguided faith that Iran will not use the billions of dollars soon to be available to continue its efforts to fund terrorist proxies worldwide. I call my colleagues' attention to recent comments by the National Security Advisor Susan Rice, who said this, we should expect that some of the money Iran gets under sanctions relief as a result of the nuclear deal would go to the Iranian military and could potentially be used for kinds, the kinds of bad behavior that we have seen in the region. Again, this deal ignores the facts and instead hopes that it will work out. Iran is the world's central bank of terrorism, and this additional income is not likely to be solely dedicated to streamlining their postal delivery routes in Iran. Secretary Kerry testified in July that they, the Iranians, are committed to certain things that we interpret as terrorism. The administration's relying on faith that the IAEA and our intelligence community will be able to detect any trace of nuclear material and any prohibited activity, and has hope that the IAEA will continue to have access to Iranian nuclear sites, access that in some cases, in some cases being defined as the ability to deliver things to the Iranians at the gate of the facility so they can conduct their own surveillance anytime, anywhere to deliver the equipment to the Iranians and ask them to do self-inspections inside the gate. If the IAEA is prevented from gaining the necessary access to declared or suspected facilities in a timely manner, we will be at a significant, a significant disadvantage and the sanctions pressures we've attained over years of efforts cannot be remade overnight. Our reliance on the IAEA is now also tied to two side agreements with Iran that members of this body have not yet been provided. I'll remind my colleagues that when the President signed the Iran Nuclear Agreement Review Act, the law required him to provide to Congress the agreement and all related materials and annexes that has, and that has not happened. And yet the administration asks that we have faith that these will not have a material effect on the agreement and our ability to ensure Iran's compliance with its terms. It raises additional questions. Do we have absolute certainty that we know what those agreements include? Do we understand how they may affect Iran's activities, assumptions, or willingness to abide by the terms of its agreement with the United States? Do we know without a doubt where every potential nuclear facility is located? The President argued that although it may take 24 hours to finally get access to a site, high school physics will remind us that nuclear material leaves a trace. And so we'll know that, in fact, there was a violation of the agreement. I don't have absolute certainty that this is true and question the administration's willingness to give up a requirement for anywhere, anytime access. If Iran isn't hiding anything, why wouldn't they offer that access? Do we trust Iran's claim that they don't have a covert facility? Do we have faith that they do not? Are we hoping that they do not build one do we or can we have absolute certainty on this issue? A former IAEA deputy director stated in 2013 that if there's no undeclared nuclear installation today, it will be the first time in 20 years that Iran doesn't have one. Ultimately, I believe this deal 
is built on a foundation that is far more unstable than the administration would have us believe. While I realize that all the parties involved in this deal have been trying to spin the narrative to their benefit, I cannot believe that a deal as tough as the administration would have us believe would be referred to by the Iranian president as a legal, political, and technical victory for Iran. The administration has chosen to trade all of our economic leverage, leverage that was working, for a near-term possible delay in Iran's breakout timeline. No doubt we will still have leverage, but it will be limited. Perversely, given the President's statements about opponents of this deal to military action, something we've tried to avoid for many years as it relates to Iran, the administration hopes that it will not have to use military action. Can you tell me with absolute certainty what the Supreme Leader's intentions are? Can you tell me what he's thinking or what he's thinking in 10 years when Iran will have rebuilt its struggling economy and will be nearing the end of what, if, what limited restraints may remain on its nuclear research and development activities? Did we just enable a regime based on a false choice that we didn't fully understand? One of the President's chief criticisms, as typical of his straw man approach to the debate, has been to suggest that opponents of the deal only want a military action. Oddly enough, it's the President's own agreement with the Iranians that has stripped us of all leverage except military action if the agreement is not adhered to. The strategic decision to engage Iran in the resulting deal cannot, based on absolute certainty of Iran's nuclear program or its intentions, the agreement is based on questionable assumptions, allows far too much maneuvering by Iran and naively trusts the regime that has a history of evasive activities and false declarations to the very body, the IAEA, entrusted with enforcing the agreement. Do we know without a doubt what is going on in every laboratory in Iran, whether it's on a military facility or a university campus? I applaud the efforts of our negotiators in our intelligence community, in our diplomats, but I'm sorry to say that we're sent, they were sent on a fool's errand by the president. They provided a false choice between this agreement and war. The narrative just doesn't add up. I've spent the better part of 15 years as a member of the House or Senate Intelligence Committees. I understand the nature and the nuance of intelligence work, and I know that there are no absolute certainties in this business. This deal is based not on absolute knowledge of Iran's activities and its intentions, as the administration would have us believe. But as you can see, it's naively based on faith and hope. I, for one, will not vote to enable a regime that supports terrorism, evades international inspections, disregards UN Security Council resolutions and is opposed to the very existence of another nation in the region. The United States has effectively led the international community and enacted sanctions that have restrained a hostile regime, and it now looks as though this administration will undo those years of efforts and enable the same regime by filling its coffers with badly needed resources. I don't know with absolute certainty where this agreement will lead, but I do understand that there are too many unanswered questions to move forward. Mr. President, I urge my colleagues to join me in opposing this agreement, and I yield the floor.